Hey, Christy. Hey, Edith. What is totally funny and makes dogs itch? What? The flea stooges. It's <laughs> 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 good. Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners from Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening has gotten very popular. And we've noticed more and more people picking our brains for tips and troubleshooting about gardening. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips, a fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down Tulips. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, Christy. Hi, Edith. Hello, gardeners. Hello, wannabe gardeners. Here we sit in the basement on a stormy night. We're here in thunder, and we love it. Thank goodness for the rain. Yeah, absolutely. Though not so good for our neighbors up in the mountains. They're getting those monsoons and the yeah. mudslides right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But our little backyard gardens are happy right now, getting some rain. They sure are. Hey, Christy. It's the first show of year two. I still feel like I'm celebrating our first anniversary. You will put down the booze and pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> the booze is down. Yeah. So anyway, here we go. Here we go in year two. So thrilling. Thank you, everybody, for listening to us over the last year. Especially, let's thank, let's do a sh- patron shout out. Thanks, everybody, on our garden party. Today, we're going to do a shout out to Linda R., Linda, who is my sister-in-law, who lives in Texas. Thanks, Linda, for being a deadheader. Deadheader means that she throws a couple bucks a month our way to help support the podcast, and she gets some fun rewards. In fact, maybe as she's listening to this, she is drinking out of her Upside Down Tulips mug. Hey, that's some good family you got there, Christy. Yeah, thanks, Linda. And if you want to be a member of the garden party, all you need to do is just click on the link in the show notes below, and we accept all sorts of levels for every pocketbook to become a sponsor, and you get fun rewards. You said clink. (laughs) Do you know you said clink? (laughs) I wonder where I get that from. Oh, I don't know. (laughs) Anyway, that would be great if you would do that. Hey, Edith. Yes. How's your garden going? Oh, did you hear that thunder? I did hear that thunder. Oh, that's so nice. Well, the garden is going to enjoy this rain. That's for one thing. Uh, it's it's all going really well. Um, I I do have some. This is garden related, Christy, but it's not the typical garden update. But I have some real incredible grossness to talk about. <laughs> well, I'm excited to hear about grossness. So, I love one of my very favorite things is liverwurst and radish sandwiches. Um, on sourdough bread. You know, who doesn't love liverwurst and radish? I've it's been very feeling common. a lot. Do you, is it? Very common. Are you being sarcastic? I can't tell. <laughs> you are, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. And I look forward to it every year. It's the one time of year that I buy liverwurst. And I buy it in a tube, a little tube. Because, you know, who doesn't like meat in a tube? Especially It's, it's the way t- nature intended it to be. It's exactly that. It's so true. It's all tidy in a tube. So... I go and I pick the like the last of my radishes and I put them on the counter and I get out the liverwurst and I had already had a couple of sandwiches so it was the tube was open and I have this great great sandwich and the the next time Christy that I do that very same thing I look down and there in the middle of the tube nestled amongst the liverwurst is a spider <laughs> You see what happened? He came in with the radishes. And he, unbeknownst to me, very sneaky, stealthy, he went into my tube of meat. A stowaway spider. A stowaway spider who sat in my refrigerator in the tube in a plastic bag for days. Was he still alive? Yes, he was still alive. But it was shocking. (laughs) So that was shocking, but not horrible. Horribly gross. That's my warm-up gross story. Yeah, it was the, a bug. Oh, the warm-up. Oh, oh, oh dear. Warm-up yeah, gross story. That was the warm-up. So should we do a trigger warning for everybody? <laughs> uh, maybe so, because I almost lost my daughter over this next one. 
It's a true story. So as you know, I've been doing the Bokashi experiment. Now, what that is, folks, is I'm trying to make compost by putting one bucket inside of another bucket. In the first bucket, there are holes so that the liquid can drain out into the second bucket, right? And it's supposed to be anaerobic, which means no oxygen, so the whole thing speeds up the process. So, And what's unique about this composting process is that you can use meat. I'm so glad you said that. I'm so Because glad. in your outside compost pile, you should never use meat. Never. Well, here's what happened to me. As you know, I did put meat in it. So I ask my daughter Gretchen to help me because she's really strong and she gets the first bucket and I have a, like a, what do you call it? Like a plastic thing. What is it? A thing that you... A plastic bin, a tub. A bin, a tub. (laughs) Yes. So there's a plastic tub all waiting and she picks up the inside bucket and she puts it in the, and all this water drains out and she says, mom, the water's moving. And I go, honey... That's just because we just disturbed it. And she goes, no, the water is moving. Christy, there were thousands of maggots. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, okay. Okay. Worse worse than maggots? There were pupa. There were thousands of pupa, which looked like little tiny cigars. The smell... You know how they talk about bad smells? Could have knocked a buzzard off of a <laughs> wagon. It was so, so bad. Gretchen lost it. She goes oh, running no. into the house. Oh, no. Oh, no. Somehow, one fly had gotten in there because I hadn't, I guess, pounded it down hard enough. All you need is one fly. You just need one fly. And that was so friggin' gross. That's what happened to Jeff Goldblum. In the movie The Fly, when he was doing the transportation and the fly got in the time travel machine and that's how he turned into the fly. You just need one little fly. Oh, I did not even know that. Nice association, Christy. So that was the grossness that happened to me. What did you do with all the maggots? I drowned them. Okay. I tried to drown them and the pupa and then... um, just in case people needed to know. Yeah. Like, we try to give handy tips and tricks, Edith, and who knows when somebody might need to know that tip. <laughs> you know why I'm saying this, though, is be prepared for, like you say, gardening is not for the squeamish. Things are going to happen. You're going to bring insects inside, worms, all those things, Bugs. slugs. Yeah. Just don't be squeamish, you know? It's going to happen. So that is my story. Did Gretchen survive? She did. She did. She stopped gagging like 48 hours later. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) So what about your garden? Well, I think we need to talk about zucchini. Oh. So as folks know, I started my own zucchini this year by winter sowing, which means I put little seeds in a milk jug, and I also paired them with some spaghetti squash. And what happened was the spaghetti squash, squash germinated but the zucchini never did and I was bummed so what I did was I planted the summer squash and then I right straight in the ground I planted some zucchini from I seeds from in a seeds, seed packet right mm-hmm. in the ground I took the seeds it was already an open seed packet so I had used the seeds from like last year and I had some extra seeds and I put three in the ground and they all germinated and I was very happy But then as the plant was beginning to grow, last time we talked, I said, I don't think this is a zucchini plant. I was worried it was a a yellow summer squash plant. Edith went in the backyard after Mm. that episode, folks, and looked at it, and we looked at each other, and we went, that is yellow summer squash, Mm -hmm. which meant that I have no zucchini, and I have four yellow summer squash and right now my kitchen has 12 yellow summer squash that I need Edith to take some. (laughs) Luckily Christy I planted what I thought was a yellow summer squash turned out to be a cucumber so so lucky I don't have any 
yellow squash, you don't have any zucchini. Well, we're just going to have to trade back and forth all summer. One of the things you told me, Edith, was like, well, what the hey, just go ahead and throw some seeds in. Maybe this was two, uh, 10 days ago. Yeah. I put three zucchini seeds in the spot where Cindy Brady was. Yeah. So to help people know where that is, that in, in Tomato Town, part of my garden, I've named my plants after the Brady Bunch because they're on a grid. And Cindy Brady was a Roma tomato plant, and she was dying, had some sort of fungus. I ripped her out, and I threw her in the garbage. Not the compost pile, because it has a fungus on Mm -hmm. it. So you always want to throw those plants out in the garbage. So I'm calling this little spot Cindy Brady 2, I guess. And guess what? Did it germinate? It germinated. I have... They've all germinated, and not only that, but the the first true leaf is up on them. So when a plant comes up, it'll send the mm. the first two leaves are sort of like the things like baby teeth. Yes, baby teeth. Baby teeth. But now the first true leaves are coming up. The question I do not know is: Is it a zucchini, or did (gasps) I just plant more yellow summer? Because it was the same exact seed packet. Seed packet. Yes, and so I'm. I, I don't know what happened with that seed packet. Did I get yellow summer squash seeds in there? Was there is there a mistake in the seed packet? Christy, I do it's, not al- know. it's almost impossible to tell when they're young what is what. And I've been seeing this all over on Facebook on gardening, uh, what do you call things, gardening groups. Mm-hmm. Everyone, is this happening to everybody? So, really? We'll, misidentified? Yeah, misidentified. Things. Whoa, Whoa that thunder. beautiful thunder. Yeah. You know, things just not coming up that you thought were going to come up. Well, I guess it'll, we'll find out. Now, this is what I think we should do, Edith, though. Yes. It's because two of these yellow summer squash, they're kind of far apart from each other. Uh-huh. And I think I can dig it up. Okay. What if, as an experiment, you have a dig a hole in okay. your garden. Okay. Are you with me here? I'm with you. And then on a day where it's not too hot, either really early in the morning or later in the evening, uh-huh. I try to dig up as big a clump as I can. Yeah. Now this summer squash, I gotta think, is already like two feet by two feet, mm-hmm. and it's full of blooms. But I have four. I can sacrifice one, and if it doesn't work, but I will do the big, big clump. I can. You live three blocks away. I can, um, I'll hop in my car. No, 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 I'll no, get an, no, 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 don't hop in your car. Get an ambulance. It's yeah. faster. <laughs> okay. I'll call 911, get an ambulance, mm-hmm. get it to your house. And if we just throw it in yeah. and water the heck out of it, yep. right? Yep, yep, The worst that could happen is that that summer squash dies. But I have, yeah. I already have, I mean, I'm going to have a lot of summer squash. You have three and I have none. So this would be perfect. So let's try that this weekend. And folks will report back to you. Okay. Okay. All right. I will prepare a really good hole. Good. I'll, I'll put uh, worm cake castings in it, and and I'll put. I'll, I'll make sure it's yeah. Because the hole is important, folks. We so we important. always say you should you should dig a fifty dollar hole for mm-hmm. a fifty cent plant. Yeah. Nice big wide wide hole, and I'll try to have as much soil that yeah, goes so it with doesn't that. know it's being moved right away. Yeah, exactly. we'll try to trick it. And you know, and maybe you should put a lawn chair over it. Oh, that's a great idea. I have a lawn chair. chair? I have a lawn chair. Because the lawn chair will shade it in these hot July days. Oh, that's a really good idea, Christy. Okay. Okay, we have a plan for the weekend. Okay. Now, I want to tell you this also, Edith, that um, I was out in the yard, and my husband says to me, "What's what's that over there in the flower bed? And we looked at it, and that was a little skull. What? A little skull. Of what? Skull of what? Well, we looked it up, and we're pretty sure it was a squirrel skull. Oh. It was clean, white, nothing else, just the head. Wow. Did it have teeth? Yes. Well, that's interesting. And then, a couple days later, it was gone. Uh Uh-oh. Wow. I'm surprised you didn't bring it in the house and use it as a paperweight. For very light papers. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it was kind of cool looking. It what? Well, where'd it go though? Um, that's a really good question. I don't know. It's just gone. You could have raccoons back there. You you could have stuff back there. You know it? Mystery. Big mystery. The yeah. other mystery in my yard, well, it's not so much a mystery, it's a cute mystery. Well, Edith, we've lived in this neighborhood for 20 years. Yes. And we've always had a lot of fox. Yes. And now we don't have fox anymore. 
And you mean it, fox the animals? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Uh-huh. Foxes? We don't have yeah. foxes, okay? Oh, mm-hmm. that's the plural as foxes. There's a plural. Mm-hmm. Oh, unless it was just one gigantic fox okay. wandering around. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or Jamie Fox. Or Jamie Fox. So you're talking uh-huh. about right. Jamie? Yeah. yeah. Um, so okay, we didn't have. We used to have foxes. Yes. And see how educational this show is, folks. We used to have. We used to have foxes, but uh-huh. we don't anymore because they got the mange and they died. So when the foxes left. Guess what I have in, living in my backyard? What? A bunny. Oh. I haven't seen a bunny in oh. my yard this whole 20 years. Wow. And I think that's what was chewing on my cauliflower earlier. A bit. So, so that means that next year I'm going to have to get some cloches to cover up the... Li- mm-hmm. You know, they like grass and they like young little seedlings. Yes. So I'm going to have to rethink uh, some of my early growing. You know, I ran into somebody who also lives in Wheat Ridge who has foxes in her backyard. I think the foxes are coming back, which I'm really, really glad to hear. Well, we're, I'm kind of attached to this bunny now, so I don't want anything to happen to it. Okay. Well, then put a bell she's around so its cute. neck. I don't know what to she's tell you. She's so cute. I'm sure she But will. if she eats that zucchini plant, I'm going to be really <laughs> mad. So I probably should get a close Yeah, not cute that anymore. Up. Yeah, not that's cute very true. At all. Well, folks, if you hear words or terms that you're not familiar with, like bokashi, check out the Upside Down Dictionary on our website at UpsideDownTulips.com. Or cl- click on the link in our show notes. Very good, Edith. Thank you. While you're there, sign up for the newsletter, and which is a good newsletter. It really is. And check out our blog posts. If you want to see pictures of our gardens, inspirations, gardening jokes, visit us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. And don't forget, we have a YouTube channel. I don't know why, but we do. <laughs> you have to have a YouTube channel. Of course you Edith. do, because you're not hip without it, of course. And folks, if you like true crime, then you'll love our brand new pod play, Who Killed Rosemary? Enjoy. I'm walking down a tree-lined street. It is an ordinary summer day in an ordinary suburb of Denver, Colorado. The air is like a sober Harry Styles, thin, hot, and dry. Everywhere, people are out walking their dogs, drinking craft beer, and arguing over who was the best quarterback of the Denver Broncos. I come across an ordinary house where an ordinary woman sits on an ordinary front porch. She gestures in an ordinary way to the backyard, but this is no ordinary moment. I walk to the backyard. At first, it looks like an ordinary backyard. There is an arbor and a peach tree, a fence with a grapevine, a vegetable garden, about 127 heads of lettuce. And then I see her. She is smaller than I imagined. Right away I could tell somebody cared for her, somebody fed her, gave her water, made sure she stayed warm during the winter. Somebody loved her. But now her lifeless limbs are stiff and gray. She was a rosemary plant, and she is dead. For Upside Down Tulips, I am Misty Contour, and this is Who Killed Rosemary? Edith pours me a cup of coffee. Sugar? No, thank you. Clearly the tragedy has taken its toll. Edith is a shell of the woman she used to be. Hey, tell me about your rosemary. Well, she was just the world to me. She always... Actually, I will take you up on a little honey if you have it. Honey? If it's not too much trouble. Um, okay. Here you go. Thank you. Tell me about your rosemary. Well, she was just the world to me. She always smelled wonderful, and she was perfect to have over for dinner for a leg of lamb. Sometimes she came on too strong, but you just had to know how to handle her. 
Tell me about that day. Well, it's okay. Well, I woke up early and saw it had snowed overnight, so I went outside to see how she was doing and. Yes. And. Excuse me. What? Who Killed Rosemary is sponsored by. Huh? Bindweed Singles. At Bindweed Singles, they will find your match. They guarantee the roots of your love will grow deeper with time and that the ties at Bind will grow stronger every year. Use promo code STIFFROSEMARY. Go ahead, Edith. Tell me about that day. She was fine the day before. Life was finally perfect. And now, she is dead. I just don't know what could have happened. Who killed my Rosemary? Who killed Rosemary? I have a feeling I'm about to go on a journey of mystery, sex, and corruption. And what about poor Edith? Poor, sad, pathetic Edith. Hey! Where is her justice? Where is her peace? Who is the best quarterback of the Denver Broncos? I'm left with more questions than answers. I didn't know then what I know now. If you have information related to the death of Rosemary, please email UpsideDownTulips at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and tune in for upcoming episodes. So, um, here's our topic this week. It is what we learned from each other. Yes, the top ten-ish things we Mm -hmm. learned from each other over the last year. We made it really clear we're not experts. We are so far from experts. We're not master gardeners. We're none of that stuff. Uh, So we learn so much from each other. So perhaps, Christy, you would like to start what you learned from pathetic Edith. (laughs) Maybe you could start with that. (laughs) What did I teach you? Well, Edith, the first one Mm -hmm. I have goes uh, back to episode two, Uh which was called The First Two Commandments, Water and Mulch. Uh And you introduced me to a new type of mulch called soil pep. Mm. And Mm -hmm. folks, this is uh, a type of screened bark material that's called bark fines. In other words, it's three-eighths of an inch or smaller. So it's different than what you're going to find at your big box store when you get the bark mulch. It's really fine. And not only does it provide organic nutrients, Edith taught me, to improve your soil structure, but it's also used as a main ingredient in container mixes, in greenhouse mixes, potting soils, and it is great to use as bark mulch or as a top dressing for anything in your garden. And Christy, because it's so small, the pieces are so small, it quickly becomes part of the soil which is what we want, which I do use the bigger stuff, you know, Mm -hmm. but that is going to take years to, 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 what do you call, crumble, disintegrate. Yes. I don't know, whatever. Uh, But the the soil pep works quick. Well, thanks for teaching me about that, Edith. I used to use, well, I used to use regular bark mulch, even in my vegetable garden Mm -hmm. as a mulch. Mm -hmm. And then I used to use grass clippings. Mm Mm-hmm. And But I used to have to wait for the couple mowings of the lawn to get the grass clippings. Yeah. So I had enough. And this I was able to apply right away. And a big a big bag cost five bucks. So I just bought a, a bag of soil pep from our friends at Southwest Gardens. I just bought a bag and applied it. And it's perfect in this heat. And I need to reapply it again because as we talked about in... In our, our July punch list episode, uh, now is a great time yeah. to reapply mulch. Yeah, when it because gets hot it's just like hot this. and hotter. When it's hot and hotter like this, and I don't know about where you are, but a lot of parts of the country are not getting a lot of rain. You want to make the best use of the water that you do put in your garden. And one of the ways to protect it is to mulch. Well, I'm a huge fan of it now. Thank you so much for introducing me to this wonderful product. Well, you're so welcome. You introduced me to something I have never even heard of. The first time you said it, I thought, why is she talking math? This is crazy. And it's the grid system. It's how you plant. And we talked about in episode 15, you talked about how you uh, you have squares out there. And you plant things in a square, like a grid. Square foot gardening. Square foot gardening. That's it. That's it. And you know what really impressed me the absolute most about it, Christy, was how close you can plant your plants together. 
like I look at the seed packet and it says, you know, plant broccoli like two to three feet apart. So I do that. Well, you don't have to. Mine are pretty t- pretty close. Yours are much closer than that. And, and maybe that's not good. I don't know. But I always get broccoli. You always get broccoli. See, that's the thing. You don't get, I don't get any more broccoli than you do. So somehow it's really working. And I, um, and I, that was really big for me, that, that maybe I can make better use of my space by using some of the principles of square foot gardening. Oh, cool. Well, Edith, you taught me in episode 26 from the ground up about how I can homemade do my own soil test. So I've been living in this garden for 20 years, had never done a soil test, and I never knew what it meant to have loamy soil, which is people are always saying, you should have loamy soil, and what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And that loamy is a mix of clay, silt, and sand. Mm -hmm. And you want an equal measure of all three, but how do you know if you can do that or not? Well, Edith taught me a soil test, which is all you need is your soil, water, and dishwashing detergent. And you put them all together in a jar, shake it up, and in one minute, the sand will settle. In two hours, the silt will settle. And in 48 hours, the clay will settle on top of that. And then you measure it. Because it's in three levels, Mm -hmm. yeah. And you want equal parts of each, and that is what makes it loamy, which is what you want. And then you know what you need to add to your soil. Yes. And more details for this soil recipe, and also to find out if your soil is um, alkaline or acidic, is on our website. Yeah, and that's important for what you want to grow. That's important for planning. And thanks for sharing it with me, Edith, because I never would have known to do that. It's really interesting, and I'm excited to try actually different parts of my yard because I did the vegetable garden, but of course there are parts of my yard that are more sandy and more clay. Mm-hmm. So You actually have a beach out there. It is so cool. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> you just live in such a high-toned neighborhood. So listen, Christy, this is this is one of the absolute coolest things that you do. And you do this for everybody. And I didn't know how easy this was to do. You will dig up an entire flower. In fact, we were just talking about this with the yellow squash. You will dig it up, root ball and all, and you'll put it in a bag and you'll fling it out into your yard and give it away to people. I had no idea how easy it was to move large plants I thought they had to be teeny tiny. And I just put it in a like a little plastic, yeah, you know, target bag. And you wet it on the bag. bottom, right? You keep yeah, it uh-huh. moist. So you can you can give stuff away. So Christy, what I love about that is you don't you hate to throw plants away, healthy plants. So you just post somewhere that they're here and people come and just take them. I had somebody this summer who's I who took some of my lambs here. And folks who are been gardening a lot you know, that lamb's ear is nice, but it can get a little invasive. And and usually you, you'll, if you have a little bit of it in a couple of years, you will have a lot of it. And there was somebody who I, I said, I'll take some lamb's ear. I said, how much do you want? She says, how much you got? I said, I can give you a couple garbage bags full. She took it all. She was so happy. And I was so happy because I wasn't wasting it. So I am, we're going to find out if that works for, um, for vegetables as well when they're that big. We'll find that out this weekend when we move that yellow, yellow summer squash. squash. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll report about that next week. So that, that's, a, that's mm-hmm. important. That's a biggie. A couple weeks ago when we, in episode 48, when we were talking about this is July and we love hanging with our gnomies. Yeah. Edith, you shared about how important it is to take the suckers off a tomato plant. I learned that from you. I'm really grateful for it, that if you take the suckers off your tomato, the plant will spend more time and energy into growing the beautiful tomatoes that you want. So folks, Edith taught me that if you see a juncture between two branches and you see a leaf growing, pinch it off. That's the sucker right there. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's called that, but if you ever see a tree that has all this stuff growing at the base of it, that's also a sucker. You don't ever want them on anything, I don't think. You know why, Edith? Why? They suck. Okay, (laughs) there you go, because they just (laughs) suck. That's right. Okay, well, that's good, Christy. Um, That's good. I I learned that years ago from a cousin of mine who also gardens. Hey, let's find out more about 
who killed Rosemary and how unpathetic I get and turn into a superstar. How's that? Previously on Who Killed Rosemary. The air is like a sober Harry Styles, thin, hot, and dry. Well, she was just the world to me. At Bindweed Singles, they will find your match. She was fine the day before. Life was finally perfect. And now, she is dead. I just don't know what could have happened. Who killed my Rosemary? And what about poor Edith? Poor, sad, pathetic Edith. John Elway. For Upside Down Tulips, I am Misty Contour, and this is Who Killed Rosemary? I'm walking to the Jefferson County Extension Office where Rosemary has been taken. Each county in the United States has an extension office that works closely with experts from universities and helps provide information about gardening, agriculture, and pest control. I'm hoping someone can shed some light on who killed Rosemary. Rosemary was lying on a table. Beside her is an ordinary woman. As she examines Rosemary, I could see she has chipped nail polish and dirt under her nails. Like the gardener hands treatment offered by Phoebe's Phenomena Nails. Everyone who is anyone is gardening these days. Even if you don't garden, you can look fashionable without all the digging, pulling weeds, hoeing, and raking. At Phoebe's Phenomena Nails, they had the latest trends to help make your manicure stand out. Use promo code Pathetic Edith. Salvia rosemarinus, commonly known as rosemary, is a shrub with fragrant evergreen needle-like leaves and white, pink, purple, or blue flowers native to the Mediterranean region. It is a member of the mint family, Lamiaceae, which includes many other medicinal and culinary herbs. The name rosemary derives from the Latin ros marinus, or dew of the sea, the plant is also sometimes called anthos from the ancient Greek word meaning flower. Hello, I am Juno Halloran, and I am a mother master gardener. What can you tell me about Rosemary? What happened to her? It's difficult to say. The main causes for Rosemary dying are overwatering, lack of sunlight, pests and diseases, high humidity. Other reasons that can cause Rosemary to die are extremely cold winters, and high rainfall. And of course, one can't count out foul play. Foul play? Did Rosemary have any enemies? As I was about to find out, Rosemary did have some enemies. She was one of those love it or hate it herbs. Many people enjoyed her pungent pine-like personality. But her strong aroma and flavor can turn some folks off. But enough to... Murder? I am going to pass something along to you, something that someone told me a long time ago. What he said to me was, Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Looks like you have a lot of mother work to do. That's right, mother master gardener Juno Halloran. I do. I have a lot of mother work to do. If you have information related to the death of Rosemary, please email UpsideDownTulips at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and tune in for upcoming episodes. We don't know who killed Rosemary, but we may eventually find out. But here we go. Things I learned from Christy. Christy, remember when we started this, I used to call soil dirt. I never used the word soil. <laughs> I didn't like the word soil you or mean, moist. Yes, you didn't like Moist soil. There was something about the oi sound uh -huh. that was challenging for you. Christy, I was so wrong. I was so wrong. Dirt is dead. Soil. And the different kinds of soil I learned about from you. Seed, seed starting soil is different from, from potting soil. Is different from uh, top soil. In episode 18, which is Good Garden Tools and Hacks That Don't Blow... You mentioned that your favorite garden tool was uh, was a type of weeder. And folks, maybe it's about a foot long and has a 
really good size handle. And the, the, the tool itself is very long and it has a pointed tongue like a snake. And Edith used that to get way into the soil because you can get in real deep and pop out weeds. And then the very next episode, episode 19, something old, something new, something bioengineered, Edith gave me one. And I had the chance this spring to finally put this weeder into use. And it is fantastic, Edith. Isn't it great? It goes into the soil like Mm -hmm. butter and pops out Mm -hmm. weeds. I've also used it for other things too. There was a section of my lawn that I was scooping away. I do that, folks. I have I have a lawn, but every year I scoop more and more away so I could have more plants. And getting grass out is not fun. No, it's hard. It's really hard. It's a lot of work. I, we, you know, we don't use chemicals. If you want to get rid of grass using chemicals, you're going to have to find another podcast to listen right. to. So we I was doing it the do old-fashioned mm-hmm. way of digging it up. But I tell you, that weeder was so good because I could get a pitchfork in there and get it started. Uh-huh. And then I could get down and the weeder would really help up lift up the turf of it. So thank you so much for introducing me to that weeder. Okay, so the ne- the biggest thing I learned from you, and I think the biggest thing our listeners learned from you, because this is such a heavily downloaded episode, 25 is winter sowing. I have winter sowed things, which folks is a method of starting your seeds in January or February in milk jugs. Outside. Outside. And then they will, they will germinate when they're ready. And it doesn't matter what zone you're in. No, we're in zone 5B. It snows in the Denver metro area in January, February. Yes. And I have grown things I never knew that I could even grow. Foxglove, my favorite flower. It They love, it's like you're making like a little mini greenhouse. And it's, you know, you get milk jugs from somewhere. And it, so it costs basically nothing. You put soil in it. And you're recycling. And you're recycling. So that I thank you ever so much for that. That was great. Another tip I learned from you, Edith, is that when, I don't remember which episode you mentioned this in, but when seeds are germinating yeah, and you have two or three seeds that you put in its little spot because you just don't know the germination rate. Right. And just say all the seeds, all the seeds come up. Just say two of them come up. You want to allow them to keep growing to see which one's going to be stronger, which one's going to be bigger. Yeah. And what do you do with that extra seedling? You taught me how to snip it off and not pull it out. Oh, yes, I did, didn't I? Because if you pull it out, you're at risk of damaging the root structure of the plant that you want to keep. Instead, just take your uh, your fingers and pinch it off or two, take a little nippers Uh and cut it off so that that smaller plant will die and your other plant will have all the room it needs to grow. And so I'm going to have to make that decision in a couple of weeks regarding the new zucchini plant that I just mm-hmm. planted yeah. out there. I have two that germinated. They're really close to each other. Yeah. You have to do something to one of them. Yeah. yeah. I have to thin them out. It's hard thin for me them. to thin. I know. But you have to be difficult. a little bit heartless so the other person can grow. Uh, Christy, you know what I figured out just as you were talking is that the less you can disrupt your garden, the better. So... Rather than pull, you snip. Rather than pull out my pea plants. Remember what I said last week? Yes. That I read, you just cut them off at the soil level. Mm -hmm. Really, the no-till method that I use, don't disrupt. Because nature is happy to take care of it for you. It knows best. So don't be yanking stuff out and rototilling around mm-hmm. unless you really want to. Well, that's something else I learned from you also. And this is be before we, we ever started this podcast, Edith, was that I used to rototill every year. I thought that's what you were supposed to do. And then one day we're in my backyard drinking coffee and you said, yeah, I don't rototill anymore. I've heard that it really disturbs the microorganisms. And I went, oh, that's really interesting. And I did some more research on it and I have not rototilled. I, I don't think I rototilled in 10 years. That's so great. Because I always was imagining it chopping worms up. And that was just a horrifying thing to imagine. Yeah, that's even worse than maggots. Oh, (laughs) Oh, geez. Call back. Woohoo! Two points for Christy. (laughs) Excellent choice. Do you think worms, do you think worms, when you cut them in half, they grow back? Do they grow back? That's what I've always heard. I, you know, I, is that a, you know, 
Is that a myth? Is that an old wives' tale? I don't know. We have to come back and 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 give the answer to that. Let's do that next week. That that's a well, it's a task for you. I oh, for tell me. you. Yes. Wait a minute. How does that get on my list? <laughs> because I said it first. Okay. Do you have any more things that you learned from me? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um. Okay. This is from episode nineteen, and Christy, it may not have been specifically from you, but you were an addition to it which is the difference between heirloom and hybrid. You knew a lot more about that than I did, and that was absolutely fascinating. Especially when people think that um, hybrid plants are GMO plants, which they're not. No, 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 they're not. They're not totally at all. Totally different. It's a, a hybrid plant is just a plant that has been pollinized by a gardener and bringing out the best attributes of what that plant is. It's not genetically modified at all. In fact, most, you can't, your, your backyard gardener cannot get GMO seeds. Right. If it says GMO free on it. Yeah. It's like, duh, of yeah. course it is. Okay. <laughs> thank you. But what's, what is so great about this is that a hybrid, which for a while I thought, oh, I'm I, exactly Christy. I thought like, I'm not getting a hybrid. I just want air. I want organic. It, a hybrid, a is, hybrid organic. is organic. It's just that a scientist, a gardener, has taken and made made this tomato plant, for example. He's going to bear fruit sooner, or he's going to be more resistant against disease. That's the reason to, to buy a hybrid, which you have done this year in your tomato town. All my tomato plants are hybrid, except for Cindy Brady, and look what happened to <gasps> Cindy Brady. Is that right? Yeah, she, she, that was the Roma tomato. I've got a fungus that I need to do hybrid wow. tomatoes for about three years to let this fungus mo- okay, move away to somebody else's yard. Okay, now we know. No, don't. No, you would never do that. Moving it away. Just send the Japanese beetles somewhere else. <laughs> right. I have one more thing I wanted to share. That's something that you taught me, Edith. And that is about episode 45 when we were discussing here is the poop on fertilizing your garden. Uh huh. And this was, you taught me a lot about Miracle Grow, the oh. blue stuff. Now, friends, I've used Miracle Grow for 20 years. I haven't, I don't use it in my vegetable garden, but I sh- sure use it in my flower garden. And I would use that shake and feed stuff that you can get at the big box store and I'd shake it out every spring and put it all over. And what I learned from you is that Miracle Grow has lots of downsides. And the problem is that the nitrogen is derived from this synthetic ammonium and water-soluble nitrates, and that produces chemicals that are harmful to the microbes and all forms of life in your soil. And and it'll get into the groundwater eventually, which is what is happening all over the world, which is exactly what we don't want. Now, I know you use a lot of organic fertilizer, Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that I still can't use synthetic fertilizer. There are some good synthetic fertilizers that are organic, made from real materials. It It's a little bit more expensive. Yeah. But I have to think about, what about my little backyard? And how do I want my backyard to be? And I think my backyard matters. And so I'm going, I'm reconsidering using it next spring. I'm not going to use it in my flower bed. I use it in my house plants in the kitchen, you know, in the, Mm -hmm. in my house. I'm also going to reconsider how I use it in my house plants too. You know, until I started doing research, I mean, miracle Grow is ubiquitous. It is everywhere. Never occurred to me it could be bad until I started doing some research. Thank you, podcast. Thank you, Christy, for talking me into doing this podcast for a year and one week. I've learned so much from you. Thank you, Edith. Thank you, Christy. I've learned from you. I've learned from readers and listeners who write letters in, and I've learned from the internet. Thank you. Edith, it's that magic time. Could it possibly be mailbag time? Ring, ring. All right. What do we have this week, Christy? This is a letter from Paula from Florence, Colorado. Mm -hmm. Hi, Christy and Edith. Hi, Paula. Here are some things I learned this year. Stuff that was going wrong that I now understand. Plants getting leggy, bolting, going to seed spacing, and thinning. That's a good thing to learn. Mm-hmm. The importance of mulch. Seriously, I didn't get it until this year. It's going to change her garden life. I asked for a hori-hori knife for Christmas, and I love it. 
the hori hori knife is my favorite tool. Yeah. Folks, if you don't have a hori hori knife, you should get one. It's a good tool. Next to add to my toolkit is one of those weeding tools. I know, right? The weeding tool with the snake fork tongue. Yeah. Overall, though, I think the most important thing that has happened is I've gained a very general understanding that I didn't have before. I've been able to take a more general look at my garden and understand what is working and what isn't and why. I become a much better gardener this year, even if still only so-so, and a lot of it is because of upside down tulips. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's, that's really just nice. So Thank you. sweet, Paula. She says, I love the pod plays. I think the poet of Wyoming may be my fave right now. <laughs> Ooh, Antelope Tuomi, the poet laureate of Wyoming. Uh-huh. Also, I love the puns. I often have to pause a step to laugh at those. Warmly, Paula. That's a really nice letter. And, you know, um, I think of myself as a so-so gardener. You know what I mean? I yeah. lose stuff every single year. I don't know what's going on half the time. But better than nothing. Yeah. A good is not the enemy of perfect. I love when you say that. That's a good thing to say. Thanks, Paula, for your letter. And thanks for liking our good slash bad puns. Hey, everybody. Do you have a favorite gardening story, a success, a flop? Have you learned something special from Upside Down Tulips? Why don't you write to us then, huh? Like Paula did. Write to us, please, at UpsideDownTulips at gmail or at our website at UpsideDownTulips.com. Or, or check, check out, out the show notes. Show notes. <laughs> <laughs> or check out the show notes. Show notes. I hear piano music. The lights have dimmed. Is that incense I smell? I think it's time for inspiration. If you feel useless today, remember, somebody is working as a lifeguard at the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you like that setup? <laughs> yeah, that was great. I got that from the internets. Twiddling their thumbs. Uh-huh. <laughs> Nobody is useless, folks. If you're listening to us, you're not useless. We're grateful for you. Thank you for listening. We are Edith Weiss and Christy Montour Larson. And if you got some laughs and some value out of Upside Down Tulips this episode, could you do us a favor? Please do. Hit subscribe, like, or follow button on wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks so much to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. You want to hear more of Denise's music? Go to denisegentilini.com or you can find that link at upsidedowntulips.com. And a special thanks to our local nursery and friend of the show, Southwest Gardens. Join us next week for help. What is wrong with my tomatoes? We'll help you figure it out if we can. Don't forget, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Upside down. If you're a so-so gardener, yeah. do you also reap reap? Oh, jeez, help me. <laughs> oh, help me with the puns. <laughs> See you next week, everybody. Bye.